What is up guys, Taiki here, and in this video, I wanna go over how impermanent loss works in Cribs HVAC Crypto Pool. If you like the content, please like and subscribe, and leave a comment in the comment section below, so let's get started. Okay, so everyone likes Curb. They're a multi-chain, they have liquidity money incentives on a bunch of chains, including Avalanche, Phantom, as well as Arbitrum. And the curve, the, the chart crypto pool that I highlighted here, uh, if you don't know how it works, essentially think of it as you're being a liquidity provider for three assets, right? Uh, deposited equally 33% of Bitcoin, ETH, and stable coins. And I made a couple of videos talking about imprint loss and how that affects, uh, I guess, your yields on chart crypto. And uh, I just wanted to make this video because uh, what my, I guess my understanding of imprint loss for this particular pool was incorrect. And I want to go over like what I got wrong and like show mathematical proofs of like what the actual impermanent loss and the opportunity cost is. Because the fact that it took this long for someone in the community to correct me on this probably means that a bunch of other people, probably including yourself, don't have a great understanding of impermanent loss for this particular pool as well. Okay, so in my previous video on Friday, I mentioned that, hey, like if Bitcoin goes up 3x, ETH goes up 25%, uh, your impermanent loss for this particular pool is going to be 9.39%. And I guess the way I framed this impermanent loss was saying, hey, like if you started with, let's say $6,000 in Bitcoin, if you just held it, uh, you'd have $18,000, right? Because it, it would triple. However, with the 9.39% impermanent loss, you'd have $16,310 plus whatever rewards you earn because of impermanent loss. Uh, so feel free to pause this video. If you just wanna you know, quickly test your knowledge, think of it as like a quiz on like, okay, like what did I get wrong, right? And like, what is the actual impermanent loss? But I'm, I'm just gonna keep going uh, because you know I'm not making this video. Um, but let me just define what impermanent loss is, and then go over a simple example, and then dive into like the facts that I got wrong, and you know what, what the actual numbers are. So when I think about impermanent loss, I think of it as the opportunity cost of being a liquidity provider. It's how much you lose by being an LP relative to just holding the assets. Impermanent loss is the result of the LP position selling the outperforming asset to buy more of the underperforming asset, right? And I'll give a more, uh, a more, a more tangible example here uh, if that doesn't make any sense to you. So let's just start simple with neat USDC pool for Uniswap V2, right? Or Swap, etc. So when you're a liquidity provider, you just deposit two assets, right? In equal ratios into the pool and you earn a part of the swap fees. Uh, and let's just assume that the price of ETH is a thousand and you know price of <laughs> stable coins a dollar and you deposit one ETH and a thousand USDC, right? Like 50-50 ratio, bam, included in there. And let's just assume for the sake of simplicity that this particular liquidity pool has 10 ETH and 10,000 USDC. So I own 10% of the pool. And let's say ETH just goes on a crazy run and it goes to $4,000, right? In like a couple of days or something. Well, now 10 ETH is now worth more than 10,000 USDC. So essentially, the, this liquidity pool has to sell some ETH and buy more USDC so that the ratios are equal, right? So this essentially happens. And uh, since the ratio must be equal, there's now going to be 5 ETH and 20,000 USDC in the LP pool. So think of it as, you know, ETH goes up, so the pool is going to sell some ETH to buy more USDC so they can meet in the middle. And since I own 10% of the pool, when I pull out, right, let's just say I just want to pull out immediately, I get 10% of the pool, which is gonna be 0.5 ETH and 2,000 USDC. Now this is 20% impermanent loss because if I did not be, if, if, I, if I did an LP, I would have one ETH and 1,000 USDC, which would equal to $5,000. But because I uh, provide liquidity, I would have $2,000 of USDC and half an ETH, which is $2,000, so it's $4,000, right? You also get swap fees and whatever farming rewards, yeah. But you know, this is a 20% impermanent loss that you know people talk about. And you know, the more an asset goes up relative to the other asset, there's gonna be more impermanent loss, uh, yada, yada, yada. So the way I think about it is, uh, you know, a mental model is like, because I was an LP and ETH went up a lot, I incurred a 20% opportunity cost by trying to farm using the ETH USDC pair. Cool. Uh, but you know, let's go back to this HI crypto pool and think about what happens when there's three assets involved instead of just two, right? So let's just go over this example. So I just think of it like this, right? It's a 33% uh, ratio of Bitcoin, ETH, and stable coins, right? Uh, it's not just USDC, but you know, just stable coins in general. And let's just assume that, you know, st we're starting out with $6,000, we just split it up, right? We take $6,000 of whatever asset, we just put it in there, and Curve will split it up into, you know, $2,000 of Bitcoin, ETH, and stable coins. And let's go back to this example, right? The initial example where Bitcoin triples in value and ETH goes up 75%. What is the actual impermanent loss? What is the actual opportunity cost? Right, so you know, if you started with six thousand dollars of Bitcoin, if you just held it, you'd have eighteen thousand dollars, right? Because I mean, six times three is eighteen. 
Uh, but uh, the 9.39 percent of impermanent loss doesn't apply to the eighteen thousand dollars, which is what I got wrong. It actually applies to what I would have earned if I just held, if I did not LP, uh, assuming I held two thousand dollars of Bitcoin, two thousand dollars of ETH, and two thousand dollars of stable coins, right? Because if I didn't LP, right, and I split up my assets into you know three three buckets, two thousand dollars of each. If ETH, if Bitcoin goes up to three X, I'd have six thousand dollars of Bitcoin. If ETH goes up 75%, I have $3,500 of ETH, and then stable coins don't move. So, you know, in total, I would have $11,500, right? And then permanent loss applies to this number, not the 18,000, which is what I got wrong. So, you know, due to the permanent loss, if this happens, you'd pull out $10,420. Additionally, also like the yield you get from the tri crypto pool. So, you know, if I just held the Bitcoin, right, I would have $18,000. But the real opportunity cost to being a liquidity provider for tri crypto versus like just being a Bitcoin maxi is $10,420 versus $18,000, which is roughly a 42% opportunity cost. This isn't impermanent loss, right? Because it's not like, it's not like it's the def definition of impermanent loss. This is like the opportunity cost of, you know, depositing $6,000 of Bitcoin into the tri crypto pool relative to just holding Bitcoin, you know, in your wallet, like on Aave or just like, like wherever, right? But let's go over like a more realistic example, right? I, I don't really think Bitcoin's gonna go up 3x anytime soon, uh, may, maybe in like the next year or something. But you know, let's, this is like a more realistic example, right? Where Bitcoin goes up 50%, it goes up 75% over the course of a few months. Yeah, I mean, I, this is totally reasonable. Uh, right now, the impermanent loss for this particular pool is 2.65%. But you know, with our new understanding of tri crypto pool and impermanent loss, let's go over like what the, what the impermanent loss is, as well as the opportunity cost of just holding ETH. So with this example, if I didn't uh, LP, I'd have $8,500, right? Just, just doing simple math. And the 2.65% impermanent loss would mean that I would pull out $8,275 plus whatever yield I would earn. However, if I just held ETH, I'd have $10,500, right? Because it's appreciates 100%. So the opportunity cost compared to just being an ETH maxi is 21%, $8,275 versus 10.5 k Right, so I mean, I'm assuming that like we all know like what asset is gonna outperform next, right? Like maybe stablecoins outperform in the next two months, and you know, being in Asia, crypto is better. Maybe Bitcoin outperforms, maybe ETH outperforms. But you know, these are just simple examples of okay. It, 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 I guess I guess our initial understanding or my initial understanding of, of incremental loss was incorrect uh, for this tri crypto pool. And uh, I, I just wanted to bring over like some mathematical examples of like what APY means in like the grand scheme of things. Because yes, 28% APY, you know, is great. But if you actually do the math, like, you know, you're gonna earn like 0.5% per week, assuming that the 28% APY is stable, right? So, you know, understanding this, like, is it really worth, you know, if, you, if you're giga bullish ETH or giga bullish Bitcoin, is it worth being a liquidity provider for track crypto when you're earn, only earning 2% a month on, uh, on, on your assets? Even if you increase this to 200%, you know, you're only gonna be earning 2% a month, uh, sorry, 2% a week and 9.5% a month. Obviously, if it's APR, the numbers are more favorable, 4% a week, 16% a month. But, you know, I mean, 4% a week, I mean, we get 4% hourly candles on Bitcoin, like, in like, like sometimes too, right? It's like, it's like you know, like, you know, no one's getting out of bed for like a 4%, uh, 4% 4, 4, 4 yield. So, you know, in, impermanent loss and opportunity cost is something to consider as a farmer, right? Uh, it might not be the best way to expose, or I guess express a bullish view on Bitcoin and ETH, uh, which is, you know, something I got wrong. And I apologize for anyone that uh, just like, you know, blindly believed in me and just like, you know, just like allocated a portfolio in that way. But, you know, better, better late than never when it comes to admitting your mistakes and, you know, correcting yourself. But what if... You know, Bitcoin and ETH goes down, right? Like, because we also have to consider the possible scenario that, like, you know, these, these like, this market is not up only; it's going to go up, it's going to go down, and it's going to be a cyclical market. So, what if Bitcoin goes up down twenty percent and ETH goes down thirty percent? So, assuming the same example, we start with two thousand dollars each. If I did not LP, I'd have five thousand dollars, but with the one point one percent improvement loss, I'd pull out forty nine forty five. Okay, so you know, however, uh, th this just shows you how improvement loss actually protects you to the downside when it comes to tri crypto because if you just held six thousand dollars bitcoin through a 20 percent correction you have forty eight hundred dollars and forty two hundred dollars if you held all the and it went down thirty percent so you know i'd say that curves tri crypto pool helps mitigate downside risk but you will incur heavy imper impermanent loss or opportunity cost in the case uh, crypto enters a euphoric phase right also curve a tri crypto it's great when the market just is going sideways, right? Because you're like, you're not incurring opportunity cost and permanent loss. You're just collecting the yield. So that being said, like, what is like a better way to earn yield on Bitcoin, ETH, and other assets? 
well, you know, this is what, like, what I've primarily been doing for like the past couple of months. But you know, I, I really like to use incentivized money markets uh, to avoid impermanent loss and it adds more optionality. So I, I, I made this tweet a week ago and you know, I was like, maybe it's time for Bitcoin maxi season where you can just hold Bitcoin as collateral, be paid to borrow dollars against it and farm, play around with those stables. And you know, as a farmer, this is comfy season and you know, it's gonna be like a really good uh, opportunity uh, to earn yield on ETH and Bitcoin without incurring impermanent loss. So, you know, I just took the screenshot a few days ago. Uh, you know, just, you can earn 5% on Bitcoin and you can essentially take out a free loan on Tether, right? Sometimes with the USDC as well. Uh, you know, uh, depend, I mean, obviously, depending on the markets, these fluctuate, but generally you can earn or you, you can borrow dollars uh, on Aave. You can borrow dollars on Phantom for relatively like 0% interest, essentially. And what you could do is you can take those dollars and instead of putting it in the track crypto pool, you can just put it in Avalanche Aave's uh, just the stablecoin pool and earn 24.5% on it. So if you just do the math on this alternate strategy, you can deposit $6,000 or wrap Bitcoin into Aave, earn 5% on that. Borrow $2,500 in USDT interest rate, right? You can borrow something else if you want, but you know, just, I'm just choosing the stablecoin with the best interest rate. And then you can deposit those uh, th that tether on the curve, earning 24%. And if you do the math, you, you can run, earn roughly 15% on your Bitcoin and you're not incurring any impermanent loss, right? And also this is more, this adds more flexibility because, you know, you can pay back your, your tether debt whenever, right? And you can, and like, if you're an experienced farmer, like you can earn way more than 24% on stable coins, like in a relatively safe manner on other farms as well. So 15% is, this, this is like the safest yield I can earn uh, on Bitcoin, uh, given like a relatively safe health factor. And, you know, just like not taking risk on potentially getting rugged or exploited. And you might be wondering like, hey, like how do I know that $2,500 loan against 6K of Bitcoin is safe? Well, I did a, run, I did a little simulation to just prove this, why it, I think I consider this safe, right? But you, have, oh, you, always, you always have to do your own research. But what you can do is you can, so I have 6K of Bitcoin here, $2,500 tether here. If you click, click on the details tab here, this thing pops up, right? And it'll say this liquidation threshold is 75%, meaning that if my if my loan gets to 75% of the value of my collateral, my position is uh, at risk of being liquidated. So what you can do is you can just take $25, divide it by 75%, which is roughly $3,333. And this means that if my collateral dips to that number, I get liquidated. And at, you know, if I have $6,000 of Bitcoin, then this means that you know, this is gonna happen if Bitcoin dumps 44.5% overnight, right? Which is you know, generally unlikely. I wouldn't put it against Bitcoin, but it's very, very unlikely. And you know, like if what if Bitcoin's down 20% tomorrow, right? Like I'm not gonna just like let, like watch my position about to get liquidated, right? I'm gonna pay back some of my loan. So it has to be, you know, it has to dump X percent overnight in order for you to get liquidated, right? Because when you wake up and your position is dangerous, you can easily pay back your loan. So this is kind of the way I think about things. And you know, it is my mistake. I'm sorry if you, uh, you know, if you've like told all your friends and family that, hey, like you can earn 28% on Bitcoin, but, um, just wanted to correct my mistake. And I think a lot of people, like even like my like farmer friends, my DeFi, DeFi friends, crypto natives, people that have been in this space for longer, way longer than I have, like did not bring this up to me. And you know, their understanding was like my initial understanding. So hopefully this clears up any misconception that uh, I, I guess people had with the incremental loss at your crypto pool. And hopefully this gives you a better way to manage your portfolio to the upside, to the downside, or whether we're on the sideways market. Thank you guys for watching and have fun farming out there.